Grandma again. Are you ready for Grandma's story time? You know the book we're reading. Adventures of the Wishing Chair by Enid Blyton. I think we might put on your glasses, Grandma. I think we might be up to chapter 13. Let's see if I can find it. Oh, not there. This one. It's called The Polite Goblin. The next time the chair grew its wings again, Chinky looked at it sternly. The last time you behaved very badly, he said. If you want us to come with you this time, just behave yourself. If not, I'll sell you to the Jumble Man. And you won't like that. Do you know who the Jumble Man is? The Jumble Man's a second hand shop, like St Finney's. The chair flapped its wings violently, and Chinky grinned at the others. That'll make it behave itself this time, he said. It wouldn't like to be given to the jumble man. Come on, let's get in. They all got in, and the chair rose very slowly, and flew out of the door, taking care not to jerk or jolt the children at all. It flew so slowly and so carefully that Chinky got quite impatient. Now you're being silly, he said to the chair. Do fly properly. You're hardly moving. The chair flew faster. It flew very high and the children could hardly see the houses down below. Then they even flew above the clouds and suddenly, to the children's great astonishment, they saw a big castle built on a cloud. I say, look, said Peter in amazement. A castle on a cloud? Who lives there, Chinky? I don't know, said Chinky. I hope it's someone nice. I don't want to meet a giant this morning. The chair flew to the castle. There was a big front door standing open. The chair flew inside. Oh, goodness, said Molly in alarm. That isn't very polite. We should have knocked. The chair came to rest in a big kitchen. A small goblin with pointed ears, green eyes and bony arms and legs was sitting in a chair, reading the paper. When the wishing chair flew in with Chinky, Molly and Peter in it, he jumped up in astonishment. The children and Chinky got out of their chair. Good morning, said Chinky. I'm so sorry to have come like this, but our chair didn't wait to knock. The goblin bowed politely. It doesn't matter at all, he said. What a marvellous chair you have, and how pleased I am to see you. Pray sit down and let me give you some lemonade. They all sat down on stools. The goblin rushed to a cupboard and brought out a big jug of lemonade. It's so nice to see such pleasant visitors, said the goblin, putting a glass of lemonade in front of each of them. Now, will you have some biscuits? Thank you, said Molly and Peter and Chinky. They felt it was kind of the goblin to welcome them, but they didn't like him at all. He seemed much too polite. Another glass of lemonade? Asked the goblin, taking Chinky's empty glass. Oh, do. It's a pleasure, I assure you, to have you here. Another biscuit, little girl? I make them myself and only save them for special visitors. But we aren't special, said Peter, thinking that the goblin was really silly to think and say such things. Oh yes, you're very special, said the goblin, smiling politely at them all. So good of you to come and see an ugly little goblin like me. But we didn't mean to come to you, said Molly truthfully. Chinky frowned at her. He didn't want to offend the goblin. He did not trust him at all. He wanted to get away as soon as he could. 
Well, said Chinky, finishing his biscuit, it's kind of you to have welcomed us like this, but we must go. Goodbye and thank you, said the goblin. He shook hands with each of them and bowed very low. And then he turned to get into the wishing chair. Then they had the most terrible shock. The wishing chair was not there. It was gone. I say, where's the wishing chair? shouted Chinky. Goblin, where's our chair? Oh, Pixie, how should I know? said the goblin. Where's our chair? Haven't I been looking after you every minute? It must have flown away while you were not looking. Well, it's funny if it has, said Chinky. We should have seen it, or at least felt the wind of its wings flapping. I don't believe you, Goblin. You have done something with our chair. Your servants have taken it away. Tell me quickly, or I will punish you. Punish me? <laughs> said the Goblin. And how would you do that, Ray? You had better be careful, Pixie. How are you going to get away from my castle without a wishing chair? I live by myself here in the clouds. Be careful, Chinky, said Peter. Don't make him angry. Goodness knows how we'd be able to escape if he didn't help us. Molly looked frightened. The little goblin smiled at her politely and said, Don't be afraid, pretty little girl. I will treat you like an honoured guest for as long as you like to stay with me here in my castle. We don't want to stay with you at all, said Chinky. We want our wishing chair. What have you done with it? But he could get no answer from that polite goblin. It was most troublesome. What in the world were they to do? Chinky suddenly lost his temper. He rushed at the goblin to catch him and shake him. The goblin looked scared. He turned to run and sped out of the big kitchen into the hall. Chinky ran after him. Molly and Peter just looked at one another. Chinky will get us into trouble, said Molly. He really is a silly Billy. If he makes the goblin angry, he certainly won't help us to get away. I suppose that naughty wishing chair has flown home. I'm quite sure it didn't, said Peter. I know I would have seen it moving. The goblin came running into the room, followed by Chinky. Catch him, catch him, yelled Chinky. Peter tried to, but the goblin moved like an eel. He dodged this way, he dodged that way. And then a funny thing happened. Peter fell over something that wasn't there. He crashed right into something and fell over. Bang! And yet, when he looked, there was nothing there that he fell over. He felt very much astonished. He sat up and stared around. What did I fall over? He said. Chinky stopped chasing the goblin and ran to him. He put out his arms and felt around. And then his hands closed on something that couldn't be seen, something hard. Oh, he yelled joyfully, it's a wishing chair. That deceitful goblin made it invisible so that we couldn't see it, even though it was really here. And he meant to help us home, all right. As soon as he was gone, he meant to use our wishing chair for himself. And we'd never know. Then it hasn't flown away said Molly, and she rushed over and felt it too. Oh, goody, 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 we can get into it and go home, even if we can't see where we're sitting. Get up, Peter. Come on, let's fly out before that nasty little goblin does any more spells. They all sat on the chair they couldn't see. Home, wishing chair, home, cried Chinky. The invisible chair rose in the air and flew out of the door. The goblin ran to the door and bowed. So pleased to have seen you, he called politely. No, 
nasty little polite creature, said Chinky. My goodness, we nearly lost the chair. Now we've got to find a way of making it visible again. It's no fun having a chair and not knowing if it's really there or not. I don't like the feeling of sitting on nothing. I like to see what I'm sitting on. And they flew home. They got out of the chair and looked at one another. Well, we do have adventures, said Peter grinning. And that's the end of that chapter. Fancy sitting on a chair that's not even there. That is magic, isn't it? Come back and we'll find out what the next adventure is. Bye-bye.